For this primetime news, here are the headlines. Government and health officials struggle to contain the MERS virus here in South Korea as the number of confirmed cases rises yet again on this Friday. Fears continues to grow over MERS and the impacts are starting to weigh heavily on the public. For starters, President Park Geun-hye's approval rating dips, while normally busy venues like theaters and malls remain mostly vacant. Meanwhile, North Korea releases new video of its firing of a submarine-launched ballistic missile. Not only does it give a clear picture of the test, it shows that it was a success. These and more coming up. And welcome to Primetime News on this Friday, June 5th. I'm Hwang ji -hye. And I'm Daniel Che. Good to have you with us. On Friday alone, six additional MERS cases were confirmed here in Korea. That brings the total number of infections to 42. And a fourth MERS death was also reported. For details, we connect to our Park ji -won at the News Center. ji -won, give us the latest. Hi guys, the fourth reported death was a 76-year-old man who died overnight. He first picked up the virus while he was being treated at the hospital where the first MERS patient in Korea was also staying. Uh, today's six new cases include the first confirmed military personnel to be diagnosed. The Korean Air Force officers stationed at the Osan Air Base contracted the virus last month at that time at the same hospital. As a result, the military has put around 170 officers under quarantine. Well, so far, health authorities have placed over 1,800 people in quarantine nationwide, and also more than 1,300 schools have temporarily closed. And as of now, there are no known cases of people contracting MERS outside of hospitals, but with about 200 people waiting for their MERS test results. That could easily change. Well, the Korean government is being extremely cautious about the information they want to share with the public. Finally, they announced the name of the hospital that treated the first MERS patient, right, Juan? Yes, Daniel. It's Pyeongtaek St. Mary's Hospital that treated the first MERS patient for the three days last month. But it's where a whopping 30 out of the total 42 MERS cases were reported. The 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 co contraction rate there was extremely severe because the hospital had failed in isolating the first patient. Medical staff didn't realize the first patient had been infected with the virus until it was too late and by then it was transmitted to others who were also placed in the same room. And what's more surprising is that in post-inspections, health authorities found traces of the virus in the room's air conditioner and on a doorknob. The hospital has been shut down for the time being. Authorities are now checking to see if the virus could have been spread throughout the central air conditioning system. And now the health ministry is asking anyone who visited the hospital from the 15th to 29th of May to report themselves by contacting the MERS call center. And Jiwon, an entire town in Jeollabukdo province has been shut down due to the virus. Could you tell us more about it? Yes, Jihae, a town in Suncheon County, which is located in the nation's southwest, has been placed under the control of health authorities this Friday. A 72-year-old woman who stayed in the area for two weeks has tested positive in an initial check for the virus. The problem is that she was supposed to be in home isolation for visiting the Pyeongtaek St. Mary's Hospital last month, but she did not follow instructions and instead traveled to Suncheon. And more than 100 people had been in contact with her. Well, a crisis like this brought uh, old rivals and enemies closer together, like the rival parties at the, uh, the lawmakers here in Korea. But uh, we hear there's been some uh, discord between Seoul City and the health ministry over MERS countermeasures. Well, that's right. It started with Seoul Mayor Park won soons decision to release information Thursday night regarding a local doctor who contracted the virus. Well, he went to a large-scale conference in Seoul attended by over 1,500 people over the weekend while showing minor symptoms. Well, Seoul City criticized the health ministry for not quickly sharing such critical information. But the health ministry shot back Friday morning saying there were close consultations and that the move by Seoul City created unnecessary fear among the public. Well, Mayor Park said 
There was no other way to help the public than inform them of the possible dangers they may have been exposed to. Well, Seoul city officials have contacted those conference attendees to warn them of the situation. But meanwhile, the doctor, who is a 35th MERS case, said earlier today that the mayor's facts were off and unverified. He insisted, he insisted that although he did attend several events, it was before he began exhibiting symptoms of the disease, adding that he didn't know that he was infected at the time. Back to you. Now let's just hope those 1,500 people remain safe and virus-free. Thanks to one for that detailed update. And in an effort to ensure the Korean public that the government is actively trying to contain the MERS outbreak, President Park Geun-hye visited a quarantine facility earlier today. It was her first such visit since the country's first infection was confirmed back on May 20th. Our Choi Yoo-sun has this report. On a surprise visit to the National Medical Center on Friday, President Park Geun-hye called on the local governments to closely communicate with the central government's prevention headquarters on all MERS-related concerns. This comes after Seoul City Mayor Park Won-soon criticized the central government's insufficient quarantine the night before, claiming a doctor infected with the virus had contact with 1,500 people. Admitting that the government, despite following international protocol, had shortcomings in its initial response to the outbreak, the president reassured the public that everyone who may have been exposed to the disease was being tracked down. She said the government is mobilizing all means to do everything it can to prevent further spread of the virus and that she hopes the people will continue to have faith in the government. President Bak then urged all those under house quarantine to avoid contact with the outside since the virus hasn't spread beyond medical facilities to the general population. In response to criticisms over the government's policy of not revealing the names of affected hospitals and patients, the president said she has ordered for more government transparency. President Bak then thanked all the medical staff working around the clock to treat the infected patients, asking them to continue their hard work to contain the outbreak. Choi Yusun, Arirang News. Well, the government's efforts to better inform the public about the virus has done very little to dispel the public's concerns. I think we'll be seeing a lot of empty chairs and empty tables in the weekend. And Koreans are staying away from crowded places such as concert halls and theaters. As a result, the entertainment industry is feeling the impact. Kim ji has the story. Behind the counter, the employees greeting customers are all wearing surgical masks. There are bottles of hand sanitizer in almost every corner. This is not a hospital ward, but a movie theater in downtown Seoul, where the MERS outbreak has dented ticket sales. The Korean Film Council says ticket sales for Tuesday and Wednesday at box offices nationwide reached 436,000. That's a 27 percent drop from the same period last week. We are aware of the growing concern about the MERS outbreak around the country. In response, we're doing all we can to make our customers feel more safe. Movie theaters aren't the only venues feeling the impact. A growing number of concerts and performances scheduled at venues in Gyeonggi-do province, where the MERS virus is most prevalent, are being either postponed or canceled. Already a concert tour by singer Lee Mi scheduled for the weekend has been postponed. Concerts scheduled at venues in the capital are expected to be affected by the outbreak as well. The K-pop concert by Jung Gi-go and Mad Clown that was slated to take place in Itaewon this weekend has been postponed indefinitely for the same reason. Kim Jung, Aidang News. Now, what's surprising about the MERS outbreak here in Korea is how fast the virus is spreading. In just over two weeks, the country confirmed more than 30 MERS cases, meaning it's spreading almost two times faster than all of the Middle East region countries, which confirmed 29 cases last month. The infectivity of the disease is also alarming, as some of the patients caught the virus while visiting certain hospitals at times for less than an hour. Now, fears and speculation are growing over whether the virus has mutated. 
Experts say viruses can easily change their shape for survival, and the result of such changes are the outbreaks of avian influenza, SARS, Ebola virus, and MERS, which have been seen globally. They say the transformation is possible due to the virus's simple structure of genetic material and protein, and MERS in particular has a structure that is less stable, leading to higher possibilities of mutation, according to experts. If MERS does mutate, it's going to be far more difficult to forecast how it will act and develop. The speed of infections is likely to accelerate. And because there's no cure or vaccine for MERS, there won't be an answer for the mutated version as well. But because people also have the ability to build up their immune systems against the virus, experts say we won't have to be too worried about MERS as long as precautions are taken, along with good personal hygiene habits. The IMF has a message for the U.S. Federal Reserve to not raise its key rate, at least for now. The head of the International Monetary Fund has taken the unusual step of asking the Fed to wait a while before raising interest rates from near zero, citing the slowing U.S. economy and low first quarter growth. For detailed explanations, we turn to our Shin Semin. A warning from the International Monetary Fund urging the U.S. Fed to hold off on its rate hike until next year. IMF Chief Christine Lagarde said there is still too much uncertainty about economic growth and job creation and raised concerns about inflation. Regardless of the timing, higher U.S. policy rates could still result in significant market volatility with financial stability consequences that go well beyond the U.S. borders. IMF analysts also said waiting too long could cause inflation to rise too quickly, while waiting a little longer would provide valuable insurance against the risk of disinflation, policy reversal, and ending back at zero policy rates. They're also worried that the U.S. won't reach the Fed's 2 percent target until mid-2017. The Fed has held the rate at near zero since the financial crisis in 2008. Her comments come at a time when the Fed had been showing signs that it would delay a rate hike until there are stronger signs of a recovery. Fed Chair Janet Yellen had previously suggested that the central bank would raise rates for the first time in nearly a decade, near the end of the year, if the economy was growing steadily. But the U.S. economy shrank to 0.7 percent in the first quarter, and growth projections are murky. The fund estimates 2.5 percent growth this year for the U.S. economy, higher than Wednesday's OECD report that slashed growth to 2 percent from 3.1. The think tank said the strong dollar is dragging the economy down. All eyes are on the next Fed committee meeting scheduled for mid-June, as the Fed chair may provide some indication of whether she will continue with the initial plan to raise the rate, and if so, when and by how much. Shin Semin. Arirang News. Moving on to some other news, as Japan seeks to list several wartime facilities as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, Korea is bolstering efforts to ensure the full history of these sites are disclosed. At those very places, tens of thousands of Koreans were forced to work as slaves. Hwang Sung-hee reports. Korea is doing all it can to make sure Japan acknowledges Tokyo's forced labor of Koreans during its bid to list several wartime facilities as World Heritage Sites. Second Vice Foreign Minister Cho Taeyar told reporters in Paris on Thursday that Seoul is basing its argument on a recent recommendation by a UNESCO advisory panel. The International Council on Monuments and Sites said last month that Japan must ensure the entire history of the sites is known to the visitors. In its bid to have 23 industrial facilities inscribed on UNESCO's famous list, Tokyo initially marked them as being operational from 1850 to 1910. This angered Seoul since nearly 60,000 Koreans were forced to work at seven of the sites during the 1940s. Korea was under Japan's colonial rule from 1910 to 1945. 
The Korean diplomat said Japan is now in a position where it cannot ignore the recommendation. He added that UNESCO member countries are asking the two neighbors to reach a compromise. In an attempt to resolve the issue, officials from Korea and Japan met in Tokyo last month. Japan reportedly said it will respect the panel's recommendation, but did not lay out the specific steps it plans to take. The two sides will hold a second round of talks in Seoul this month, where Korea is expected to urge Japan to disclose the full history of the sites. The final decision will be made during a meeting of the World Heritage Committee early next month in Germany. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. North Korea has released a new video that shows the test firing of a ballistic missile from a submarine. This time, the footage is much clearer and seems to verify the regime's earlier claims that the launch was not only real but a success. Our Son Jung-in tells us more. A submarine floating on the sea surface gradually dips below the waterline. Shortly after, a missile soars into the air with a loud blast. We then see North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, who oversaw the launch aboard a nearby boat, celebrating the seemingly successful test firing with other officials. North Korea state-run television aired this new video on Thursday, nearly a month after it first claimed to have test-fired a new submarine-launched weapon. As the development of the missile is complete, we now possess a world-class strategic weapon that can hit and eliminate enemy forces that attempt to harm our autonomy and dignity. Although the state-run media did not specify a date or location for the test, the latest footage is certainly different from the still pictures it previously released. Those images raised doubts among some international military experts who claim they had been altered to exaggerate North Korea's progress in SLBM development. However, the latest video shows the whole process of the underwater launch, which is seen as verifying Pyongyang's progress in regards to submarine ballistic missile technology. This latest revelation also seems to support earlier statements from South Korean officials who said the North's footage and other photos of the missile launch were authentic. South Korea's military forecasts it will take four to five years for the North to fully develop and deploy the SLBM. Officials added that they're drawing up defensive measures to counter the threat. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. This year marks the 70th year since Korea's liberation from Japan and the division of the two Koreas. To commemorate these important days in Korean history, a concert was held near Korea's border. Our Connie Kim tells us more about their message of peace. Imjingak, a park in the border city of Paju, a symbolic site of Korean division and confrontation, was transformed by the sound of music on Friday. Local choirs, ensembles, and an orchestra performed at the park to commemorate the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation. Korea's foreign minister, who was at the celebration, emphasized music as a universal language that has the power to bring people together. This is the perfect setting for today's peace concert with outstanding choruses, ensembles, and orchestras. This concert is our message, our voice for peace. So. May these hopes for peace in harmony touch the hearts and minds of all in North Korea and the world. Among the eight groups that took the stage, a particularly touching tribute was delivered by the Diplomats Choir, consisting of more than 20 ambassadors to Korea and their wives. It first formed in 2009 and has since grown into a supportive community within Korea's evolving society. It gives us a chance to be together and uh, deepen our uh, friendship with uh, the other diplomats. And uh, of course, uh, it's an informal gathering and uh, we are able to uh, interact well with each other. During the concert, the orchestra, choir and ensembles that performed and the people who came out all seemed to be united as one and in harmony as intended. In bringing together hundreds of people from around the world, the peace concert aimed to build solidarity and foster peace on the Korean peninsula and throughout the world. Connie Kim, Arirang News, Paju. And for the top international headlines, we now connect to Polly at the News Center. Our focus today, China recovers more bodies from the sunken cruise ship on the Yangtze River. 
Greece holds off its repayment to the IMF, and Hollywood shows the lighter side of secret agent worlds. That's right, Paul. Let's begin with China. It's been four days since this boat sank, carrying more than 450 people. And despite a huge rescue mission, there's only been a handful of survivors pulled from the waters. That's right. Unfortunately, this story is coming to a tragic end as authorities are now shifting their efforts to salvaging the vessel and recovering any bodies still inside. On Friday, large cranes began lifting the eastern star from the riverbed at just days after a struggling through bad weather. This as relatives of the victims have demanded a thorough investigation into the disaster. After we, the families of the victims, arrived here, we felt that there's this sort of situation where they're overemphasizing that this was a natural disaster. But we live in an age of open information, and according to much of our investigation, we believe this was not just a natural disaster. Only 14 people are known to have survived the sinking, including the captain and chief engineer, who are both in police custody. Many questions have been raised on why the ship did not dock in a storm, and how crew members had time to put on life jackets but failed to alert the passengers on board. And turning to latest on Greece's debt crisis, the country has narrowly escaped defaulting yet again as it postponed a key bailout repayment which was due Friday. The International Monetary Fund said Athens will instead pay back the global lender in June with a lump sum payment worth 1.6 billion euros. Meanwhile, many Greeks say they want the government to strike a deal as soon as possible, even if it means accepting compromises. We want a government which will be confident and provide political stability. We cannot continue with this instability, not knowing what the next day will bring us. What we want is stability and security so we can move forward in the best possible way. We must stay in the Eurozone, but with fair and applicable measures, nothing more. Greece's Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras is expected to continue marathon negotiations in Brussels with top EU officials this weekend. Time is running out for the debt-stricken country as it faces dwindling cash supplies and mounting pressure from creditors to return on a path of austerity. And ending on a lighter note, the new comedy dubbed simply Spy is set to steal the weekend box office with plenty of laughs and adventure. It follows the story of a CIA analyst paid by actress Melissa McCarthy as she takes on her first undercover mission. Amid high praise from critics, the film is expected to bring in as much as 39 million U.S. dollars. Falling close behind is the thriller Insidious Chapter 3. Entertainment Weekly called it the worst kind of sequel, while The Hollywood Reporter said it breathed new life into the horror franchise. And finally, the epic disaster movie San Andreas starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson should get another boost with its worldwide earnings predicted to reach $119 million. And that wraps up our look at international stories for now. I'll see you back here on Monday. Much needed rain gave some relief today from the ongoing heat wave that's hit the country, but it wasn't enough to save us from dry air or drought conditions we've been experiencing. And now, as we can see, rain clouds have since moved out from the peninsula, giving way to clearer skies over the peninsula. And I hope you enjoyed cool and breezy conditions today. The high in Seoul only made it to 22 this afternoon, but temperatures will climb right back up to the hot side again starting tomorrow to near 30s and unlike gloomy and gray skies it will get bright again tomorrow which is a memorial day here in korea with a high topping out at 29 so for those of you plan to be outside be sure to gear up with a sun protection items and sunday shouldn't be much different and now taking a closer look at saturday's readings for other parts Daegu will rise to 29 Gwangju hit 31 and another cool day is in store for Busan topping out at 23. And as for the other regions, it seems like Daejeon and Jeju will see a high of 30 and 24, while Tokdo rises to 21. But that's all for me this week. Have a wonderful weekend.
Well, we've come to the end of another week. That's all we could squeeze into this edition of Primetime News. This has been Daniel Chen. And I'm Hong Jie. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll be back at 9.50 a.m. Saturday Korea time to bring you a live coverage of the 60th Memorial Day ceremony. So do join us then and goodbye for now.